election. What is it like to be targeted, by the way, for your political beliefs by a full, the full force of the federal government? Well, we're going to ask the man just pardoned by President Trump, conservative filmmaker and author Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh D'Souza, thanks for being with us tonight. Boy, this pardon has set off a firestorm of freakouts among people on the left. And today we had an especially uh, big freakout from a former Obama U.S. attorney, Barbara McQuaid, who was on MSNBC this morning. Let's watch. It concerns me that not only is he violating the norms of not going through that normal process, but is he painting a narrative that can be convenient for him that sensitizes the public that the government is sometimes, and, or maybe even often, very unfair to people, which I think has long-term damaging consequences to the criminal justice system. The left has uh, freaked out more over uh, my pardon than maybe uh, any other. Uh, I was watching uh, something on CNN, I think it was uh, earlier today or yesterday, uh, these things become a blur, and they were saying how dangerous it is that I got this pardon. And, and I was thinking about that, and it occurred to me that I think I know what they're getting at. It's, it's dangerous to them. It's dangerous to their ideology. And it's dangerous in a way that other pardons—I mean, think of the, the, uh, the Clinton pardon of Mark Rich. You've got a guy here who's an international um, arms trader and possibly a tax fraud and involved in all kinds of rackets. Uh, but he's not dangerous to the ideology at CNN. In fact, he, he helps to, f to support progressive causes. He gives money to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, I, on the other hand, am a non-white immigrant. I came to America with $500 in my pocket. Uh, and I've been exposing the whole progressive ideology. So I'm dangerous in that way. They're right about that. Uh, John Avalon on CNN today was also, I mean, again, the media, the, the Democrats, the never Trumpers, they're all questioning why this occurred. And let's watch. What are you supposed to think about this? Yeah. I think you see this as a, the power of the presidency means a get out of jail free card. But this is also someone who's been a self-styled conservative intellectual who's really just been a Twitter troll for a long period of time right now, appealing to all the worst instincts uh, and conspiracy theories. Well, I've never alleged any conspiracy by anyone. What I have done is expose the sordid, racist history of the Democratic Party, a history that actually continues to the present. Uh, I've also exposed a lot about Obama. Look, Obama would not have indicted me uh, if I didn't make a film that deeply upset him. I didn't just go against his ideology. I kind of got into his head. Uh, and sometimes when I speak on campus, people go, well, gee, Dinesh, what makes you think that Obama even saw your dumb movie or even cares about anything you have to say? Well, the reason I think that is because he was attacking me on his personal website, BarackObama.com. So there you go. Uh, this is a narcissistic president. President who, who believed in the vendetta and recruited goons like Eric Holder and Preet Bharara to then carry his water for him to go after me. And every oh, little so CNN, uh, CNN in the indication and, and of others, my case shows uh, that. That subscribe to their liberal ideology, Dinesh. Uh, their point is that people like you and, and people like me, we're just, we're alt right. Do you notice how that's changed now? You're not a conservative, and you're not winning in the arena of ideas. You're alt-right, or you're xenophobic, or I love it when they call you racist. That's always fun. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a way to avoid an argument, a debate. We, we saw this going back to college. Dinesh and I went to college together at Dartmouth College. Way back before they called it political correctness, they were trying to avoid the fundamental debate about the, the greatness of Western civilization, how off track they have been on so many issues, the decline of, of, of true intellectual thought and diversity of thought. They didn't want that debate. They wanted to shut down debate, which is in line with wanting to shut, frankly, you down or even this show. I mean, here's a tiny detail about my case that's so revealing. This uh, Clinton appointee judge who adjudicated my case, the same guy who said, oh, no, there's no political targeting here. As part of my sentence, he sentences me to mandatory psychiatric counseling. Now, let's think about this for a minute. What about my case? Here I've given too much money, or my own money, uh, to a candidate, a college friend of mine running for office. Uh, I'm not Jeffrey Dahmer. I didn't put bodies in the refrigerator. Uh, wh why do I need psychiatric counseling? If not, 
that it's the progressive view that I'm not just wrong, but I'm somehow crazy, that people who disagree with them require not persuasion, but therapy. And so this is a kind of re-education project that was attempted on me, and finally the judge just became super frustrated, and he threw up his hands and basically said, the re-education has failed, this, this man cannot be psychologically rehabilitated, which I, I took as a great compliment. Yeah, well, they, they tried, Dinesh. They should have put you up on the rack. Maybe they should have waterboarded you. They, see, it, that would have actually been an enhanced interrogation that they would have supported on the left. Uh, Dinesh, I always want to get, also want to get your thoughts on some comments made uh, tonight by Steve Bannon, featured tonight uh, on CNN. He seems to be re-entering the public uh, arena. He's been over there in Italy, maybe working on that populist movement over there. But he said this regarding the Mueller investigation. I've been a big proponent of Mueller. I, I was the guy that said, don't fire Comey. This thing's petering out. I have always said, you know, he's a combat Marine, great individual. That ought to play out as it's going to play out. In fairness, Laura, I, I just don't know what to make of it. I mean, I will say that actually Mueller was the head of the FBI uh, when my case first surfaced. And the Congressional Oversight Committee has been trying to, had been trying for a while to get my FBI file uh, and couldn't. Uh, and then finally they got it redacted. But in it, it, it identifies me as a prominent critic of Obama. And I think that's very interesting because why is that in my file? If this was a case of Lady Justice being blind, they're merely investigating a campaign violation. Why highlight my politics? I think it's because the FBI, the Mueller FBI, was signaling to the, the Justice Department, the Holder Justice Department, here's a guy who's one of your political enemies. Here's a guy you may want to go after. So this is the stuff that the left is doing behind closed doors. This is what makes people like, like me dangerous to them. This is why I'm not an ordinary conservative, but somebody who ultimately they would like to see locked up. Well, they've, they've seen uh, and they've tried uh, to silence conservatives before. Again, going all the way back to college campuses, they shut down speakers. You've had problem on, on college campuses. Uh, obviously, Ann Coulter, we're going to talk to her in, in a short while. She's had problems even, even being able to speak, physically being allowed to speak and participate. And now that's being, in the Obama era, Dinesh, that was actually used as a tactic, intimidation, uh, following uh, a Fox News reporter, Cheryl Atkinson thinks her computer was broken into. I mean, these are intimidation tactics that go beyond the, <laughs> the stuff that would normally think of. So they're, they're worried about Russia, but they're adopting the tactics of the old Soviet Union. It's, it's stunning. The there's, there's a deep level of lying and deception that goes on here. You know that both Obama and Hillary were disciples of, of Saul Alinsky. Dinesh, what do you think in the end happens to this Democrat Party uh, as, it, as it's moving farther and farther leftward? To me, uh, the, the party is in, in many respects rotten to the core. And what's really holding it up is not the Democratic Party itself, but by its own weight, it would collapse. But it's sustained by a kind of outside alliance involving people in academia, the left in the media, and the left in the entertainment industry. Uh, the left controls these three megaphones of our culture, and they can put out a huge amount of big lies and disinformation as long as that continues. So they're what's holding up the Democratic Party right now. They're the cover-up artists for this party. Dinesh D'Souza, thanks so much for giving us your first primetime interview after the pardon from President Trump. Thank Thanks, you very Dinesh. much.